Okay, um, finally to the gonads. Uh, we'll do the testes and the ovaries. They are the same embryological structure that develop in two different hormonal environments. Um, so not surprisingly, they'll have quite a bit in common physiologically. Um, so let's talk about the testes and the hormones that are secreted by the testes. So the testes, I don't think I need to show you where they are, but I will anyway. So here are the testes. Um, the testes are the same embryological structure as the ovaries. Um, the testes are responsible primarily hormonally for secreting these guys right here. And these guys are collectively called the androgens. And um, specifically, I want to call them gonadal androgens because a couple of these can actually be produced by the um, adrenal cortex as well. So let's call these gonadal androgens. Where, where did we go? Where did they go? Oh, there. These blue ones, blue for boys um, in this world. Um, so um, these are um, testosterone, this guy right here, which is the one everybody knows by name. DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and androstenedione. Um, and those are the three biggies um, that are in relatively high concentration, mostly in males. Um, what are they responsible for? In an adult male, they would be responsible for the secondary sex characteristics. So they're the primary sex characteristics that got put together in utero that made a typically developing male come out of um, the womb looking like a male primarily with um, testes and a penis. Um, and then not much else is externally different, male versus female, um, until you hit puberty and then you have these development of these male secondary sex characteristics. And they include like an increase in bone growth that typically makes most males on average taller than most females and then increased muscle mass, and then all of the other secondary sex characteristics that go on after puberty, like facial hair growth, muscle mass growth, um, axillary hair, pubic hair, um, and sex drive. Those all come at, at, as secondary sex characteristics. Um, definitely lipid soluble. These are lipid soluble hormones. They feed dir directly through the blood-brain barrier and in fact, brain function as well. So um, sex drive comes primarily from androgens in both sexes, actually. Um, the other thing that is that androgens are necessary for spermatogenesis. Even though spermatogenesis is not directly caused by testosterone, testosterone is necessary for spermatogenesis to occur. Because androgens ha net tend to cause um, bone growth and muscle growth, these are considered not catabolic, but anabolic steroids. And of course, people use them for that purpose to actually cause muscle mass growth. The testes will also produce two other hormones, um, inhibin, which I'll talk about in just a second. And then this hormone that's only produced during fetal development called mullerian inhibiting hormone. So I just want to take a minute and talk about how you got to be a sex at all. Um, just briefly, I won't hold you guys responsible for a ton of this in detail. I teach an anatomy. But basically, um, what happens is that both sexes have all of the genetics to become either sex, and there is a period of time in which they are um, an indeterminate sex. So what tends to make the difference is the presence or the absence of the Y chromosome. So stick with me. This will clarify in just a second. So um, if you are an XY zygote, right? meaning a typical genetic male zygote, then you have a gene that is not present in an XX zygote because they've just got two X chromosomes. And then what is going to happen is the presence of this SRY gene is actually going to start down a different path. The default anatomical sex in humans is female. You don't have to change everything. So what is going to happen is... Um, in the testes, that one of the first things that you're going to have to do, and it's only turned on if you have a Y chromosome, is that you're going to have to turn off um, what would become these Mullerian ducts 
The Mullerian ducks, if they continue to develop, they will become the oviducts and the uterus. So you need to turn those off with a hormone called Mullerian inhibiting hormone or Mullerian inhibiting S. I don't know what the S stands for. So I usually call it Mullerian inhibiting hormone. And what it does is causes degeneration or regression of the Mullerian ducts. And then assuming that you have testosterone, normal developing male is going to like cause the development of the male. So these Mullerian inhibiting hormones is only found um, during fetal development in a, a Y chromosome having fetus. Cool? Okay. Um, so that was only during fetal development and inhibin I'll talk about in just a second. And again, its function, Mullerian inhibiting hormone, is to cause degeneration of the female ducts. Because by the way, before you had a sex, you actually had both duct, both sets of duct work. The male-ish ducts are called the Wolfian ducts. And that's those right there. If you want a normal anatomical male, typical anatomical male, I should say, um, you want completed development of the Wolfian ducts, which would become the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles, for instance. Um, if, however, you wanted to have the typical development of an anatomical female, you want to keep the Mullerian ducts going, and since you don't have testosterone, the Wolfian ducts will regress. So this would make you have oviducts and a uterus, and this would make you have um, vas deferens and seminal vesicles. Okay, so um, what I want to do is I want to build the chain of hormone secretion that begins in the hypothalamus and ends ultimately with testosterone, but also with the production of sperm or sperm spermatozoa. So I'm going to draw it below, um, way down here, um, and then we're going to do the same thing for the female. Actually, I'm going to draw it on a separate whiteboard for you. Yeah, um, I will do, no, I'll draw it here. Okay, so I'm just going to draw it big and then erase it and draw the female one. And you can make two if you want to as well. So what I want to do is um, show you in this image how you end up with androgens and also how you end up with spermatogenesis. Okay. And if you were telling the male reproductive story, um, same question as I've asked you before, what organ do you start in if you're going to tell the male reproductive story? You start in the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus releases what relevant hormone? The relevant hormone to all things related to male sex hormones is GNRH, gonadotropin-releasing hormone. And we're going to follow one side and then we'll follow the other. First, I want to follow this side that will actually get us androgens. And that is this hormone called luteinizing hormone. And luteinizing hormone will go to the testes, which is just the male version of the gonads. But it goes to specific cells in the testes. Um, and the luteinizing hormone, actually, if you care, the luteinizing hormone goes to these cells called Leydig or interstitial cells. Okay, and what the testes do in response to, or the interstitial cells do in response to luteinizing hormone is they make androgens. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that the androgens are converted one to the other, but we're not going to worry about that too much. So the androgens are made, okay? But I think we all know that too many androgens, too much testosterone, can be a problem. So how does the male respond um, to different levels of testosterone? Well, the androgens are actually going to feed back. Oh, shoot, did I mess that up? No, I didn't. GnRH. Oh, I just forgot to put one little thing in here. So let me just erase it for a second. GnRH. Just add in one little detail because I forgot to put the location. GnRH goes to the anterior pituitary, and that is what releases FSH and LH. We all knew that. Anterior pituitary. 
and it releases LH and ultimately FSH. Okay, sorry, just forgot to put that in there. So um, now what happens when we have plenty of androgens? They actually feed back to say, that's cool, that's enough, and they are lipid soluble, and so they can feed back to both places. So that will control your androgen level in a male. Okay, so now what about spermatogenesis? Because of course, a typical adult male will also have the capacity to do spermatogenesis. How is that related to this story? Well, the other hormone, which is FSH, right? Anterior pituitary also releases FSH in response to GnRH. And FSH um, also goes to the testes, um, but it specifically goes to the cells that have the capacity to do meiosis. Um, and really, it's the spermatogonia. Not that you need to know that, but for those of you and they're in the follicles. And what happens with the spermatogonia in the follicles is that they are going to do spermatogenesis, which is basically meiosis and maturation. But importantly, they only do spermatogenesis if they also, in addition to having um, FSH if they also have androgens. So how do you know when you have enough sperm? Because the sperm do not swim through the bloodstream back up to the anterior pituitary or the hypothalamus to tell everything that they've got enough sperm. But what does happen is you make a hormone called inhibin. And inhibin will feed back just to the anterior pituitary to tell it not to make FSH. So that is how the whole male reproductive feedback actually works. So let's talk just a little bit about um, well I'll come back, I'll do clinical connections next and we'll talk about steroid use, pre precocial puberty, androgen insensitivity, all of that stuff.